So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about quadratic function, also known as a parabola. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to take a function which is y is equals to x squared minus 6x plus 8. And under that, I'm going to look at different types of questions. We're going to discuss the a, the effect of a and the value of a. We're going to talk about the how the graph moves vertically and moves horizontally. We're going to talk about the domain. We're going to talk about the intercepts. Then at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch the graph. So let's do that. So the first question says, what is the value of A and what does A tell us? So before we discuss A, I need to write this in the general form so that you can see where is A. We know the fact that Y, which is the same as F of X, right, is equals to when we write this in a general form, it's going to be what? A x squared plus B x plus C. What are we talking about when I'm talking about A? I'm talking about this A. So here we see from our graph, from our function, right? That I'm going to write this here, that A is equals to what? Is equals to 1, meaning A is positive. So some couple of notes. When A is greater than 0, right? meaning that A is positive, our graph looks like this. Our graph becomes a smiley face, right? Then when A is less than zero, meaning our A is negative, what's going to happen? Our graph is going to be a sad face. So we've answered the first part. It says, what is the value of A? We know that our value of A is a of a is 1 and what does it tell us since a is positive right that means this is going to be the shape of the graph since we have the first standard form of the quadratic we have another one another one is like this a open bracket x plus p all squared plus q so your p and your q are going to be your coordinates for the turning point. So the P is going to represent the x-axis and your Q is going to represent your y-coordinate. So that's your turning point. So you have two standard form. You have this one, then you have this one with the turning point. So question number two says, find the turning point of P and Q. So the first one says using completing a square. So let's do that. So we're going to take our function, which is y is equals to x squared minus 6x plus 8. Before we start, we need to write what's a, what's b, and what's c. So we know that a is equals to 1, b is equals to negative 6, and c is going to be equals to 8. So to complete the square, what we need to do, the first step is we need to half b. So we're going to take half of b which is going to give us what? It's going to give us negative 3. That's half of B. Then step number 2, what we need to do is we need to take the value that you got from half of B, then we need to square it. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to square half of B. So you're going to say negative 3 squared. Do not simplify it. Leave it the way it is. Then you're going to come here, so you're going to say y, you're going to take your function, you're going to say y is equals to x squared minus 6x. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add it plus what? Plus negative 3 squared. Then you're going to say, then you're going to go back and take this h, you're going to say plus 8. Then you're going to minus it, so it's going to be minus this value so it's going to be minus negative 3 squared right so now what's left is we need to write it in this form because we doing completing a square when we do that what we take is we take we open a bracket right then we square it so inside the first value is going to be this one so you're going to just take just x here you're going to take this one then you're going to take this negative three so you're going to take this negative three so that's your bracket here to get your q you're going to add this part that i'm gonna the one that i'm circling the plus eight and negative three that's what we're going to add so you're going to go to your calculator you're going to say 8 minus 
open bracket, negative three, close bracket, all squared. And what do we get? We get a negative one. So you're going to say this whole thing is going to be equals to minus one. And you're done completing a squared. But wait, we need to find it in coordinate form. So now we need to solve for P. To solve for P, you take the one inside the bracket. Then you're going to equate it to zero. So you're going to say what? X minus three is equals to what? It's equals to zero. Then you're going to solve for X. So you're going to take the three to the other side. So you're going to say X is equals to positive three. So this value is the same as P is equals to three. So you have your P value. Then your Q value is going to be the one that's outside the bracket, which is negative one. So Q is going to be equals to negative one. So therefore, your coordinate for the turning point is what? So your coordinate point is going to be 3 and negative 1. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second one. So we're still finding the turning point, but now we're using the formula. So the formula says is x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. So what we need, we're going to need your a value. So we're going to take your function. You're going to say y is equals to x squared minus 6x plus 8. So plus 8, right? Then you have your a is equals to 1. You have your b is equals to negative 6. And the last time we have your a, your c is equals to 8, right? So we need to find the turning point using the formula. We know the fact that our x value is going to be x is equals to what? It's going to be equals to negative b divided by 2a which is that is the same as negative open bracket our b is negative six and that's going to be divided by two and a is one right so when we simplify that a negative multiplied by a negative is going to give me a positive so it's going to be six two divide uh, two multiplied by one is two therefore here it's going to be three so our our x value, which is q, which is p, it's the same as p, is going to be equals to 3. So now, taking that value, we're going to substitute it back into the original formula to find our y. Because we have our what? We have our x. So you're going to take that, so you're going to say y is equals to, open bracket, 3 squared minus 6, open bracket, 3 plus 8. So when we punch that into the calculator, if we say open bracket 3 all squared, right, minus 6 open bracket 3 close bracket plus 8, and what do we get? We get a negative 1. This whole thing is going to be equals to a negative 1. So meaning our coordinate is going to be what? It's going to be 3 and negative 1 right and this three represents p and this negative one represents q so now what we're going to do is we're going to do question number three it says what is the effect of p and q so what happens when p is positive and what happens when p is negative and same applies what happens when q is positive and what happens when q is negative right so here first thing first is that we're going to talk about p and q what happens to it, then we're going to apply it to the question that we have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to first look at the effect of P. So when P is greater than zero, meaning, meaning that P is positive, the graph is going to move to the, the graph moves to the right. Then when P is less than zero, meaning P is negative, the graph moves to the, the graph moves to the left. So in our case, we know that P is equals to what? It's equals to three. Meaning what? Meaning our graph moves to the right so effect of q when q is greater than zero meaning q is what is positive the graph 
moves up, right? Then when Q is less than zero, meaning it's negative, the graph moves down, right? So taking from the equation, our Q is equals to negative one, meaning since it's negative, it's gonna move down. So to recap, P moves the graph left and right, and Q moves the graph up and down, right? And again, P and Q also represents the turning point. So now question number four says, find the intercepts, right? So we have two intercepts. We have the X intercepts and we have the Y intercepts, right? So, so the first one, I'm going to find the X intercepts. And when we find the X intercept, we need to let Y, we need to let Y equals to zero. So let's do that. Wherever we see Y, we're going to substitute zero. So it's going to be zero is equals to X squared minus six X plus eight, right? Then we're going to factorize this. So when we factorize this, we're going to take the last term, which is C, then we're going to find its factors, eight, right? So the first one is one multiplied by eight. The second one is going to be two multiplied by four. This is all the factors, right? So we need to find two factors so that when we add them, we get what we get a negative six. So this can be plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. So the first one is, this one's not gonna work. When we add it together, we're not gonna get a negative six, but this one's gonna work. So if we say negative two plus, plus negative four, what do we get? We do get a negative six. So our two factors is negative two and negative four. So gonna open two brackets. And we're going to say x minus minus 2 and x minus 4, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to equate each bracket by 0. So you're going to say x minus 2 is equals to 0 or x minus 4 is equals to 0. So we solve for x. So x is going to be equals to negative 2 or x is going to be equals to positive 4. So now let's write this in coordinate form. So it's going to be, it's going to be 2 and 0, the 0 from here. And another coordinate is going to be what? It's going to be 4 and 0. So these are your two x intercepts. So now finding the y intercept. So you're going to say y intercepts. And when you're finding the y-intercept, you need to let x equals to 0. So from our function, wherever we see x, we're going to substitute 0. So you're going to say y is equals to open bracket 0 squared minus 6 open bracket 0 plus 8. So when you punch this into the calculator, you're going to get y is equals to 8. So our coordinate here is going to be 0 from here and eight right so we done finding our x and y intercepts so now what we're gonna find is the domain and range right so first i'm gonna talk about the domain and then we're gonna talk about the range so domain is all the x values in the function or in the graph right so our domain in this case and this is a case of always i'm doing the general form of it domain is going to be x is an element of real numbers right this is the case of always then range is affected by what by a and also needs q so with range you need you need a and q to write it so if a is greater than zero meaning a is positive this will be your range you're going to say y colon y is what y is going to be greater than and equals to Q. Then if A is less than zero, meaning A is negative, meaning Y colon, you're going to say Y is what is less than and equals to Q. Now looking at our equation, we have what? We have A as being equals to 
one, meaning A is positive, meaning I need to take this condition. So I'm going to say my range is going to be Y is what? It's greater than or equals to Q, which is Q is negative one. So this will be our range. So this one is our range. Then our domain is going to be what? Our domain is going to be X is an element of real numbers. So now for question number six, it says find the axis of symmetry, right? So our P value that we got from the uh, turning point, that's our axis of symmetry. So we know that P is equals to what? It's equals to positive three when we're done solving it, right? So what's gonna happen is our axis of symmetry, you're just gonna say X is equals to three. And that's gonna be your axis of symmetry. So question number seven, they say sketch the graph. So I'm going to write all the important information that you need to sketch the graph. The first one is the value of A because of A tells us the shape. Then we need the intercepts. Then the last one, we need the turning point. So we already know what A is. We know that A is equals to one, which is our graph is going to be positive, right? because I've discussed it in the first question. So we done uh, doing the first part. Then the second part is the X and Y intercept. You already calculated it. We found two and zero and four and zero. That was our X intercepts. And for the Y we got what? We got zero and eight, right? Then our turning point, we did it. We got positive three and negative one, right? So now let's sketch the graph. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna label the Cartesian plane. This is positive Y, this is negative Y, this is positive X, and this is negative X, right? So the first point we're gonna put, we're gonna put the X intercepts. So the X intercepts comes here comes to the x axis. The first one is two and zero. So let's say this is one and this is gonna be our two. So the first point is gonna be here. Then the other one is four and zero. So this is gonna be three and therefore this is gonna be our four. So our another point is gonna come here. So then we put in another color which is yellow so that you guys can see it like this, right? Then now we're going to go to the y intercept. We need eight. So let's say this is our eight. So this is going to be our point eight, right? Then we need our turning point. Our turning point is x is three. So it's here, three and negative one. So we know that this is what? This is going to be negative one. So it's going to be three. So it's going to be three and we're going to go down by negative one. So it's going to be here. So let me put it in yellow too. So our graph needs to go through all this point. So let me connect it here like this. It's going to turn by the turning point. Then it's going to go down like that. And this will be your graph. 